Hi, this is Alison Hall and Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 122 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case in which uh, an emergency coronary computed tomography and geography was performed to facilitate CTO PCI. The patient presented with unstable angina. He did have previous coronary bypass with Lima to LAD and a sequential SVG to the first and second obtuse marginal branch. He has also had multiple PCIs of the circumflex. Diagnostic and geography demonstrated occluded LAD. There was an osteal lesion in the circumflex and there was filling of the second obtuse marginal branch. The sequential SVG to OM1, OM2 was occluded proximally, but the segment between OM1 and OM2 was actually patent and the first obtuse marginal was feeling retrograde via this uh, SVG segment. This had a severe 90% lesion that was the culprit for the patient's presentation. We attempted to treat this SVG segment. We used a microcatheter and multiple guide wires. However, we were unable to advance a wire through the occlusion. And also during those attempts, the patient did develop chest discomfort and ST segment depressions. What is the next step in this case? We do know that when patients present with um, saphenous vein graft lesions, sometimes opening the corresponding native lesions can be advantageous, especially in terms of better long-term patency. But this can be sometimes complex. In this particular case, we had an SVG lesion with a complex native and complex SVG lesion. And the question comes down to whether we're able to treat the native lesion or not. So going back, there is um, essentially an ambiguous proximal cap. This is the first obtuse marginal, but we don't really know when, where it's originating from the circumflex, which is also covered from stents, which would make doing IVUS very challenging to determine the proximal cap. Another option here would be to do a CT angiogram to determine the location of the proximal cap. And that's exactly what we did. And what we found is that actually it was a ramus that was more proximal to this vessel. So actually this is not the first obtuse marginal branch, but instead this was the continuation of the ramus that now has a nice tapered entry. This is a much easier lesion to do than an unknown uh, CTO of the circumflex. And this can be seen a little better in the 3D reconstructions. This is the ramus. This is the CTO. This is the continuation of the ramus. And this is the second obtuse marginal branch with a connecting SVG segment that has a severe lesion. So blood flows essentially from the left main, down the circumflex, up the saphenous vein graft, and into the ramus. Therefore, our plan now has changed, and the plan is to attempt the Ramus CTO. This is a favorable CTO. It, ha it has a tapered proximal cap. Le the length is approximately 20 millimeters. The distal vessel is a little diffusal disease, and one might potentially be able to go retrograde, but given the ST changes and chest discomfort we had before, that would be the last resort. So the plan here was to attempt undergrade wire escalation, as a first strategy with undergrade dissection re-entry as the second strategy. We did use a Corsair uh, and uh, placed a protection wire into the circumflex and then try undergrade wire escalation with various guide wires including Gaia Second, Fielder XTA and Pilot 200 which failed. However, a Gaia Third did cross the CTO into this uh, connecting SVG segment. This was changed for a workhorse Sion Blue guide wire. And then the challenge is, in this scenario, you have essentially a wire crossing the CTO into a side branch, but we now need to place a wire into the main branch. And the best way to do this is by advancing a dual lumen microcatheter over the wire that is placed into the side branch, and then through the over the wire lumen of the dual lumen microcatheter, advance a second guide wire into the main branch. This can also be done by creating a hairpin wire into the side branch and then pulling it back that can help wire into the main vessel. And this is an illustration of this. We have the side branch and essentially we advance the dual lumen 
microcatheter over the pre-existing wire and use the side port of the over the wire lumen to wire into the branch. Twin pass torque is the only dual lumen microcatheter currently available in the United States. And that's exactly what we did. We have the dual lumen microcatheter and we're trying to advance a guide wire into the distal portion of the ramus branch, but unfortunately the wire kept on going down the vein graft, but eventually it did find its way. And actually to do this, we used the so-called two operator twin pass technique. The first operator is actually moving the dual lumen microcatheter back and forth, while the second operator is uh, probing with a software coarse guide wire until the guide wire finds its way into the main vessel. And this is exactly what happened. We were able to advance uh, the guide wire into the ramus branch as confirmed by left main injection. After that, we predilated, we used the high pressure endoscope, and then uh, we were able to deliver a long drag eluting stent and restored the TM3 flow into the uh, ramus branch. There remains some flow in the SVG, however, we did not want to do anything to the graft since it is likely it will occlude in the ensuing weeks or months given the high grade lesion that it had. So, several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, opening the native coronary artery can be actually preferred over doing the saphenous vein graft intervention, especially in a case like this where the SVG could not really be safely recanalized. Second, that CTA can help resolve proximal cap ambiguity. This changed the case essentially from a very complex case trying to figure out where the proximal cap of the vessel is into a much more favorable treatment of a Ramus CTO with a clear, well-defined proximal cap. And finally, the use of a dual lumen microcatheter was very useful for advancing the guide wire from a uh, the side branch into the main branch at the distal cap of the CTO. Unfortunately, the patient came back a few months later with her current unstable angina, and now he developed uh, instant restenosis in the distal portion of the stent, which means that we probably didn't do a great job expanding the stent to start with, and this um, uh, is reflected in some of the global principles for CTO PCI, in which uh, it's well accepted that deploying the stent should be optimized because the CTOs are often calcified and diffusely diseased and long stent, le stent lengths need to be placed. So in this particular case, uh, the plan was to try to uh, treat that in stent restenosis with another drug eluting stent. A 2 to 5 by 38 millimeter stent was attempted to be delivered. However, unfortunately, the stand uh, could not be delivered and then during attempts to withdraw it back into the guide the balloon came back but the stand did not and this is one of the mechanisms of stand loss the stand cannot be advanced through the lesion or in this particular case there was an old stand here then it got stuck into the old stand and then when we were trying to retrieve it the stand remained into the vessel whereas the balloon came back in cases like this, when we have stent loss, there are two ways to approach this. One is to try to take the lost stent out. The other one is to actually leave it there and either deploy it, or if it's deformed, crush it with another stent. And sometimes this approach, meaning leaving the stent there and deploying or crushing it, might be preferable than actually retrieving it, especially if the stent is not located in a sensitive coronary location, such as the left main or a major bifurcation. How can we take it out? The simplest technique is the small balloon technique in which a small balloon is advanced through the stent. The balloon is then inflated distally and pulled back, hopefully pulling the lost stent with it into the guide catheter. Another option is to use a snare. The snare is used to grab essentially the stent and then remove it sometimes um, together with the guide wire. In this particular case, the challenge was that the stand was located all the way from the left main all the way into the aorta. So we clearly could not leave it there, could not deploy or, de or crush it, because a long stand length was actually protruding in the aorta. So retrieval was important. 
and we tried to do this using a small gooseneck snare. It was hard delivering the snare down to that vessel, but eventually we were able to partially advance it over the lost stand and then we tightened up the snare and tried to withdraw but you can see there's a lot of resistance and deformation of the stand it's still stuck within the previously placed stands into the left main again further attempts we actually had another balloon inflated inside the guy catheter to provide a little better support you can tell from the degree of deformation that there's pretty strong forces being employed at this particular moment and then eventually, after um, a lot of effort, the stand did come back. And um, uh, that, of course, um, was at the cost of uh, a lot of pushing. And you see the guide is all the way to the left main bifurcation. And this is what came out. As expected, the stand is um, very deformed during the attempts to retrieve it. We do have a small aortocoronary dissection. Fortunately, we still had Timothy flow in both the ramus as well as the second obtuse marginal branch. This time, we dilated very carefully several times. We used the guide catheter extension, and then we were able to deliver stents into the ramus as well as the left main, and the final stand in the distal left main bifurcation. This likely happened because of um, stent deformation longitudinal deformation from the deep guide catheter engagement. And after multiple high pressure balloon post dilations, a nice result was achieved with Timothy flow both into the ramus as well into the circumflex. So additional lessons from this case. The first one is that it is critical to optimize the result. Post dilate the stand, make sure the stand is well expanded, well opposed in complex PCI, especially CTO PCI. The second is that in cases of stent loss, sometimes uh, deployment may be better than retrieval, although in this case, because the stent was protruding into the aorta, um, retrieval was the preferred approach. And finally, retrieval can be facilitated by use of snares, as was done in this case. I'd like to thank you and also invite you in the upcoming uh, full-day complication course that will happen this year on July 17, immediately before the cardiovascular innovations meeting in Denver. Thank you.